Hello everybody, welcome back to the third episode of Love's Guide to Deadside. Today I'm going to be covering gear and money acquisition, and the process of progressing into later tiers of play. If you haven't seen the other two earlier episodes, I recommend watching them first, especially if you're new to the game. Now before I get into the meat of this guide, you are going to need a few things on your character in order to be effective at this stage. If you followed my earlier guide, you should already have most of these items. You are going to need some sort of armor, police vest is fine, but an assault vest will save you a lot more often, a helmet, preferably at least a tactical helmet, an effective weapon, any assault rifle is fine, snipers and shotguns are also great, bandages or any other type of healing, a backpack to store loot, and plenty of ammo. All these can be taken from patrolling military scavs, except the bandages and ammo which you will most likely have to buy. You could try doing this stuff without the recommended gear, but it's going to be a lot more difficult and much less efficient, so I really do think you should follow this checklist. So now that you've got the basic gear, you're ready to take on some of the biggest challenges this game has to offer, and also the most fun that this game has to offer. There are four main ways to start acquiring endgame gear at this stage, and I'm going to cover each one in its own section. First up, we have our hard and epic missions. Hard missions can spawn at four locations on the map, in the northeast military base, the bunkers, the northwest sawmill, and the southern construction site. Epic missions can also spawn in any of those locations except for the south construction site, so you will only see them in the mill base bunker or sawmill. They are also a bit rarer than the hard missions, but usually it doesn't take too long for at least one to spawn. In order to complete these missions, you will need to kill every bot that is spawned in the mission area. On top of that, these bots are much deadlier than your typical ones. They will shoot you faster, farther, and with much better accuracy. There are also lots of them. I don't have exact numbers, but from my experience, I can guess that at the Sawmill Hard missions, around 50 will spawn and for the epics, 60 or even more. The epic mission bots are even deadlier than the hard mission ones, and were the most deadly for a while until the Hellion Bunker Guards were put into the game, which I will cover later. But these missions are no joke, and that's not even factoring in the other players that will probably show up as well. Alright, so first let's cover the North Sawmill and Southern Construction Site, since their layout is pretty much the same. One of the most important things is getting a good entry point. At the beginning of a mission, there will be lots of bots patrolling the perimeter, and one of the most common ways players die is the initial rush from the bots when you open fire. You want to find a place that has a decent bit of distance between you and the bots, with some good cover. This is very important, because you really don't want the bots to be shooting at you from different angles, you want them to expose themselves to you from one area, so that they are easy to kill, while you take minimal damage. Make sure this spot is mostly clear from bushes, since the bots will shoot you straight through them, and away from any potential players so you don't get killed while clearing out the bots. Once you find a spot, open fire on the bots and pick them off as they rush you. An even better way of doing this is clearing out the bots with a scoped sniper from far away. As long as you stay crouched and don't move, usually they won't return fire, and clearing the patrolling groups is a cakewalk. They will rush up to you sometimes, so be ready for that. And also keep in mind you are making lots of noise, so you are an easy target for other players. Once you have cleared out the majority of the patrolling group, now you have to push in and clear the buildings. This can be very dangerous if you don't have an effective weapon for CQC, or if you rush in too fast. All it takes is a single shotgun shell from a bot to end your run. However, if you take it slow and check your corners, this should be the easiest part of the mission. In the construction site, there are two big warehouses, and in the sawmill, there is one. These buildings will be housing most of the remaining bots. First, clear the bottom floor. There can sometimes be two to three bots, but usually it's clear. Head up the outside set of stairs and clear out the main upstairs room. It's important to go up this set so you can kill the bot sitting in the main room, because if you don't and walk up the main set of stairs, that bot will probably shoot you right in the head. From there, slowly push out into the main room and see if the doors in the side rooms are open. If they are, slowly clear out every angle and look for bots sitting in each room. If you move slowly enough, you can spot the arms and legs of the bots and safely shoot them that way. If the doors are closed though, clearing becomes much simpler and you can simply breach each room one by one, clearing them out easily. 
The bot spawns in these rooms are set spawns, so in the first room close to the stairs, a bot can spawn directly behind the door and another to the right. In the room to the right of that one, there can be up to four bots, one behind the door, one in the middle of the room, one in the far left corner, and one in the far right. Of all the rooms, I've seen most people die in this one because they rush in without clearing out the three bots on the right. And finally to the last room, this one has a spawn in the left corner, one in the right, and one in the far right behind the door, which personally I have the most trouble with, especially if the doors are already open, because you can't effectively slow peek the back two rooms without getting shot in the back. Also, sometimes when you're clearing out this warehouse, if you don't clear every patrolling bot, which most often you won't, they will come up the outside staircases to flank you. It's pretty easy to hear them coming because they're walking on metal, and you should be able to take them out easily. After that, all there is left is the small outside buildings. In the sawmill, there are four of them. Each one has two potential bot spawns, one behind the door, and another one behind the second door. Also, be careful approaching this one from this direction because the bot will shoot you through the window in the bush. In the construction site, there is a hangar, which as long as you take it slow and careful like the warehouse, you can clear out easily. If the mission hasn't completed at this point, look around for patrolling bots. It's pretty common that you missed one hiding in a bush or something. My favorite mission area, though, is the Northeast Military Base. The mission bots here are always military bots, and it seems to me like this spot is the most common epic spawn out of the three. However, it can also be very difficult. This mission is pretty unique because you don't have that many options on how you can approach it. There are only three entrances into the North Military Base, the main entrance, the fence entrance, and the hole entrance. The worst option of the three is the hole entrance. There is a lot of bushes, very little cover, bots will come from your left, right, and center, while you also will be under fire from potentially three to four sniper scabs depending on your position. The second best option is the main entrance, but you will have bots coming from behind you and shooting at you from inside the base at the same time because of less wall cover. I feel like the best option is the fence entrance. First thing to do is to get rid of the sniper scabs, and the scabs patrolling the outside of the wall. After that, start baiting the scabs that patrol the inside by quickly peeking them and going back into cover. Wait until they walk up to the fence so you can safely drop them. While this is happening, keep a good 360 security. It's really easy for other players to come up behind you at this stage. Once you're able to stand out in front of the fence without taking fire, you are ready to make entry into the base. What I would do is go around the main entrance and kill any scabs that might be still sitting by the road, and then try to run up into the upper hangar. The only things left to clear at this point are four buildings. The upper hangar, the two middle hangars, and the main concrete building. You can choose to do whichever one in whatever order you prefer, but I'm going to start in the upper hangar. Each hangar has set bot spawns like the warehouses, and for this reason it's always better to make entry in the small back door, and not the main ones. Once you open the door, there will usually be one bot directly behind it. From there, go ahead and open the door to the main room, and slowly peek the door, shooting the arms and legs of any bots that you happen to see. Once that room is clear, go ahead and hit the left room, there should be a bot to the right of the door. After all the hangers are clear, head up into the main concrete building. Go to the left side door and open it and peek down the hallway. Generally, there will be two to three bots standing there, and you can mow them down easily. When you walk in, check the main door on the right for a bot and the rim to the right of that. After that's clear, head upstairs and the last spot will be down the hall at the right in the far right room, the same room that's connected to the outside stairs. Just like last time, if the mission doesn't complete at this point, there's probably a patrol bot still around, or maybe even a sniper scab in a weird place. While this is all happening, keep in mind that other players can hear your shots and make entry easily because you already cleared the patrol scabs for them. Just remember there's only three possible entry points, so you can make a good guess where enemy players can be and move accordingly. The last mission is in the bunker, and there really isn't all that much to it. All the mission bots are around the main bunker room, and I do mean all of them. The room is usually full with around 30 bots spread out. When you make entry to the bunker, watch out for the external guards in the main entrances. They're the same as heli guards from what I can tell, and are for sure the most deadly bots in the game. Once you get into the bunker, take it slow and carefully. Check every corner for camping players or bots, and once you make it into the main room, just hold an angle and wait for the mission bots to push you. Grenades are extremely effective here, and I highly recommend bringing some F1 grenades. But stay away from those R5s, those are seriously, seriously trash. I'll do a video soon on grenades, but 
Just take my word for it for now. The R5s are bad. While doing this mission, also realize there could be other players coming up behind you. There's only a few paths through the bunker at all, so if any player does decide to show up, you'll probably run into them. So now that you understand how to complete the missions, what do you get as a reward? While the hard missions generally give a good bit of money, a tier 3 weapon, advanced medications, ammo, and sometimes uniquely camouflaged armor and stalker bags, you can even drop up to tier 4 weapons, which would be the GL-40 grenade launcher and M99. You also usually get some kind of optic, it can be any kind in the game, with the more expensive ones being rarer. You could think of the epic mission rewards as basically a hard mission reward, but better. You will get all the same stuff, except you have a higher chance to get more money, tier 4 weapons, heavy assault armor, stalkers, code locks, hammer scopes, med X's, all that. Now just because you did an epic mission doesn't mean you will get an epic reward in the crate. I'm not exactly sure how it all works, but my guess is when you open a mission reward crate, some rewards you are guaranteed to get, like a weapon or money. However, depending on the tier of the mission you complete, the chance to get a better reward is affected. For example, if you complete an epic mission, you have a much higher chance to get a better weapon and more money than something like an easy mission. And for every mission, there are more possible rewards that can possibly spawn, and the chance they are better depends on the tier of the mission. Sometimes you complete an epic mission and get ADK, a tier 4 and 3 weapon, heavy assault, and tons of other rewards, filling most of the crate up. Other times, though, you will get just a tier 2 gun, less money, and less items, like something you'd expect from a medium mission. I'm not exactly sure how all the RNG works, but the higher tier of mission, the better the chances are you will get a better reward. Other than the reward crate, though, there's still plenty of loot to be had here. The bots you kill doing these missions will generally be military bots, which can have some very good loot on them. It's a good idea to try to loot every bot that you kill and loot them quickly as you're clearing out the mission. Always check their shirt pockets first, they can spawn dog tags and rarely bunker keys, which are honestly one of the most valuable items in the game. I'll cover those in my next video, but for now just take them. They can also spawn any armor except the armored tactical rigs and any high tier helmet, but usually they're just wearing normal tactical helmets, which sell for about 2k a piece. But usually at least one bot in a harder epic mission will have a heavy assault helmet on them. And usually you can find a couple normal assaults, as well as the operator helmets or LZSH 1 plus helmets, whatever you want to call them. The bots also usually have decent guns. If you brought a stalker bag, you can usually fill it with two AKMs for an extra 20k profit. If you didn't though, they also carry 1911s and M9s, which sell for 2k. If you loot every scab and the mission reward and make it out, these missions are more profitable in terms of money than anything else in the game, while also providing usually at least one piece of high tier gear, but it's pretty common to make it out with three or four. You can increase your profit even more by bringing the gear you got from the mission to a wandering trader. The Wandering Trader won't buy everything, but the stuff that he does buy will go for twice that it goes for a normal trader, so it can nearly double your profits. But hey, maybe missions aren't your thing. The bots can be frustrating, and players camping the mission rewards are even worse, so let's look at a couple other options. When a cargo crate spawns, you will see a Russian Mi-8 AMTSH helicopter fly over to the drop location, and then spawn the cargo crate in the air behind the helicopter, which will slowly descend to the ground. This is also the moment when the players will get the cargo spawn notification, and it will be marked on the map. If you see a helicopter before a drop, and you know that you are next to a drop location, it's not a bad idea to chase the heli in order to get a head start. Cargo drops are pretty simple. There's no bots guarding it, and all you have to do is walk up to the crate and take the items. The actual challenge is the other players, which sometimes camp crates with snipers or try to kill you as you leave the area. Unless you were super close to the crate when it dropped and you can be confident there's no other players around, you should definitely scan the area for potential enemies. Scan the hills, tree lines, and bushes for snipers, and watch the crate to make sure nobody's on it. Make sure you have an open slot for a weapon and some other loot so you don't take too long at the crate. Now unless you plan on camping the drop or doing some PvP, there really is no reason to stick around after you loot the drop because other players will for sure be on their way. But as far as loot goes, the cargo crates always drop at least one weapon, one piece of armor, two clothing items, some ammo, some meds, and sometimes a backpack or a scope. 
However, if you get lucky, there can sometimes be up to two weapons, two pieces of armor, and sometimes up to a stalker bag. I've never seen that much in one crate at the same time before, but getting two weapons in one crate actually happens decently often. The weapons are typically tier 3, so weapons that are unique to cargo drops, missions, and helis, but they can be as good as tier 4, or as bad as tier 2, so sometimes you just get a crappy pistol. As far as armor goes, the armor spawn can either be a helmet or chest armor, ranging from the worst armor in the game all the way up to the best. It just depends on your luck which one you get. Any armor, clothing, or backpack that you might find in a cargo crate can sometimes have a unique camo on them, which is pretty cool because you can only get those camoed items from cargo crates, missions, and helis. A good way to farm cargo drops is to sit on a hill near an area with a lot of cargo drop spawns. Whenever I do this, I sit on the hill in the far north area and just watch for helicopters flying in. When you do spot one, you can chase it down to the drop location and safely loot it before anybody else gets to it. But hey, maybe sitting on a hill for potentially over an hour doesn't do it for you, and maybe you want a little bit more excitement than just running to a smoky box and shift clicking. In that case, the helicopter crash is the place to go. The helicopter crashes periodically spawn in areas generally around the edge of the map, however sometimes they can be in the middle. Unlike cargo drops, you can't see the helicopter crashing, but maybe in the future you will be able to. When you go to a helicopter crash, you will usually see the smoke of the crash first, and then the actual wreckage, which will be surrounded by 2-6 to six helicopter guards. Now as I mentioned earlier, these helicopter guards are by far the hardest bots to fight in the game, almost to the point of absurdity. Sure, there only may be a few of them, but they can spot you from super far away, they can full auto spray you with great accuracy at almost any range, and they also move really erratically making them very hard to snipe. When you open fire on one, the rest are instantly aware to your location if they hear your weapon report. If they see any part of your body, they will open fire. Just think of it like fighting one of the scab bosses in Escape from Tarkov. Now, never try to fight these bots if they're uphill of you, or through any bushes. They can see perfectly fine through tree leaves, thick bushes, and even the grass on the ground. This is why I'm so adamant that you should never fight an uphill battle with these guys because they can and will shoot your helmet through the grass, instantly killing you. They do this so fast that I've had times where I approach a heli crash going uphill, and one of the guards will kill me before I can even see them. This whole situation with grass and bushes hopefully will get fixed in the future, but for now it just makes the heli crashes that much harder. As long as you approach the heli crash from the right area though, preferably from a long distance with plenty of cover and height advantage over the bots, you should be able to dispatch them just fine, especially with the scope sniper. So at this point, if you've killed all the bots, all that there's left to do is loot. This is actually probably the most dangerous part, because now you won't have to worry about other players shooting you while you're trying to loot. So make sure to clear the area quickly and efficiently before trying to loot anything. First, I would loot the helicopter guards. Of all the bots in the game, these bots by far draw the best loot. It is very common to see these bots in decent armor with RPKs, and sometimes you can even find them using tier 3 assault rifles or snipers. They can also spawn wearing heavy assault helmets and armor, however I've yet to see both at the same time. In their sure pockets, they can also spawn golden dog tags, which sell for double the amount of a normal dog tag, while also having the ability to drop bunker keys. Once you loot the guards, the actual helicopter cargo is in a small grey crate on the front left side of the helicopter between the hard points and the fuselage. The crate spawns with its lid closed and opens up when a player clicks on it, so you can tell if it's been looted already. The loot in the crate seems to be about the same as a cargo drop, however it consistently is better, giving rare loot more often while also dropping a little bit more meds. Usually you will be able to get at least one tier 3 weapon out of the crate with a decent optic and some pretty good meds. Stalkers also spawn decently often, as well as good armor, and I'd say that the heli crashes are the best way to farm both. I will say though that the helicopter crashes, at least in my experience, draw the most players compared to missions or cargo crates, and it's pretty often you're going to get yourself into a fight. It's also pretty common to see squads doing these as well, because the bots are a lot easier to kill with more people. But hey, let's say you don't like any of the methods I've talked about so far, and you still want to get decent gear and money with maybe less potential PvP risk. For this, I recommend farming the secondary, military, and industrial areas. Now that there's a lot more going on in the map at one time, it's a lot less common to see geared players or squads just going to the northeast military base if there isn't a mission active there. I mean, that's not to say you won't see anybody, I'm sure you will eventually, but 
the total traffic to the area has definitely reduced. Same goes for smaller industrial and military spots, like tents, radio, and construction site. You can potentially find some pretty high tier loot at the military areas, as well as find expensive items like car batteries and saws in the industrial ones. But overall, it's going to be a lot less profitable than doing missions and helis and stuff. Finding things like tier 3 or above weapons will be impossible, and the high tier armor and gear will be extremely rare. Doing this method, the only way you'll be able to get tier 3 weapons is by farming enough money from industrial areas to buy it from a trader or a player. Getting gear this way is going to take much longer. Someone farming missions all night could potentially get every tier 3 weapon that they want, while it will take you about the same time just to find one. But the risk is a lot lower, and there's a lot less gear required to actually do this method. It's actually basically what I told you guys to do in my beginner's guide, so you could afford the gear to do the missions and helis and stuff. But, I mean, doing this isn't wrong by any means. You'll still get yourself some decent loot. It's just a lot slower than what I talked about earlier in this video. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, let me know what you want to see next. I'm going to be doing a guide talking about Dead Side's Endgame. That's where I'm going to cover bunker crates and high-end PvP. I'll also be doing more deep dives into stuff like grenades and sniping mechanics in the future. I'm also thinking of doing a 2v2 tournament soon on the Wasteland server, which is where I mainly play now. Hopefully you guys learned something and enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe for more because there will be more coming soon. And uh, that's it for now. Good luck out there, boys. See ya.